Well, hey everybody, this is Matt Kloskowski. Welcome to this video where we are gonna take a look at the adjustment brush and some tips and tricks inside of Lightroom and Photoshop's Camera Raw because the brush is basically the same in both. Now, this video is kind of a celebration free bonus video for my upcoming course, No Light, No Problem. Uh, it launches on Thursday, August 9th at 12 p.m. And uh, for five days, there'll be a massive discount and uh, an exclusive bonus that you can only get. So you can just stay tuned right here or just hit my homepage up at mattk.com and there's a place to sign up for my email list. I'll make sure I let you know when the course is out. But in the meantime, let's get to the tips. Well, the first thing that I wanted to point out is we're going to start with the adjustment brush over here inside of Lightroom. It's in the develop module in the top right corner. And if you're using camera raw, so if you've opened up a photo into Photoshop and you're using the camera raw dialog box here, uh, it is that little brush that you'll see right up there. Okay. Everything I'm about to show you works exactly the same. You'll find settings down here as you scroll down that right hand panel. So just keep in mind, there might be some that you can't see there. Everything that you're about to see here works exactly the same between the two. Okay. Uh, first thing. So let's say we are using the brush tool and I want to brush a little bit of, uh, I want to brush and I always, I won't even count this as one of the things, but I always double click the word effect to reset all the sliders and then I'll just adjust what I want. So let's say I want to brush some exposure onto these uh, little houses over here. Well, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll start brushing and I have the overlay turned on. Let's turn that off for now. I'll go ahead and I'll start brushing and make them brighter. Inevitably, I want to brush up here toward the roof. And what we have is a setting called auto mask. And you might've seen this before, but I bet you, you haven't heard the little tip I'm going to share with it is that auto mask will help us kind of go along those edges there. It'll, it'll keep me from having to, to zoom way, way into my photo and use a small brush to painstakingly go across those edges. Sometimes you need that, but sometimes I can get away with being a little bit faster about it. Well, what we can do is rather than always coming down here and turning on auto mask, I can paint and I can paint in the spots that don't need auto mask because auto auto mask, it gets splotchy when you paint it. And if you keep it on all the time, number one, it looks a little blotchy. Number two, it takes longer to, to render as you brush. So I like to get the big stuff done without it. As I get near an edge, if I hold down my command key on the Mac or the control key on a PC, it automatically turns auto mask on. All right. So I have it. And as long as you keep that little middle crosshair over your subject, even though the brush is bigger, it's not going to go outside of that brush there. All right. And I know something happened because I can always come down here and I can always turn on the overlay. There's a little checkbox there, or you can just hit the letter O for overlay and turn the overlay on. But just to show you what's happening here, let's do this. I'm going to keep the overlay on and I'm going to zoom into the photo just a little bit here and let's paint and I'm going to paint and you're going to watch, even though that crosshair doesn't go outside, of the boundary of the house, but the brush does see how there's a glow. All right. So, so it, it's reaching beyond there because I didn't turn auto mask on, but let's delete that. And now I'm going to hold down that command or control key and I'm going to brush again. I'm keeping the command or control key down and I'm keeping that little crosshair and you'll notice for the most part, it is not going outside those boundaries. Notice I said, for the most part, do not expect perfection. All right. It's especially because it's such a dark edge behind there. There's not a lot of contrast. If I did it up here, I'm pretty sure I would get pretty close to perfection right up there. All right. Because there's a really contrasty edge. So Lightroom can find it. There's not a lot of contrast there. So uh, for most cases, this works just fine. If you need absolute perfection, that would probably be a time to jump over into Photoshop. But whenever I'm relighting something, I'm always kind of bouncing in and out of auto mask mode because I don't want it on when I don't need it. But when I do need it, it's really easy to just press command or control and turn it on when I get around those edges. Okay. Number two, number two, uh, oh, before that. Uh, so one of the reasons, uh, of this video is, is to kind of celebrate the launch of one of the most fun courses I've created. It's called no light, no problem. It's really meant for a very creative course for those times when we get out shooting, we don't want it. We don't want bad camera technique. We always want to try to get it in right in camera but there's times where the weather and the light just don't cooperate. And if you don't have unlimited time and funds and money to go back and keep reshooting until it does, there are things we can do inside of Lightroom and Photoshop 
to make that light better. This is how I relight my photos for, for times like that. So uh, you can go find out more at mattk.com slash light as well as download this video and you're going to see there's some little presets for free at the end of it too. Okay, so number two. Number two, this is another one that sneaks by a lot of people, is let's say I go to the graduated filter. I know we're talking about the brush, but let's say I go to the graduated filter and I reduce my highlights and my exposure a little bit and I want to want to darken that sky up there. Okay. I'm going to turn on the overlay, the overlay for now. Again, you can just press the letter O as a keyboard shortcut. Um, so I want to go up there and I want to darken the sky. A lot of times I'll use the exposure to do it, but more times than not, I'll actually use highlights because highlights will keep me from kind of infringing upon this area. But there are times where I really need to bring it down and I'll use exposure too. Well, you'll notice what happens when I turn it on and off. See how it kind of creeps over into the trees and starts to make the trees look darker. And this would happen if I did it in camera too, right? Graduated ND filter is still going to darken the trees. But by doing it here inside of Lightroom, not only can I move this around, I can go to the brush option, all right? And this is what sneaks by a lot of people is because they're actually, you'll see it says new. New is if I wanted to go and create a whole nother new graduated filter. Edit is editing the existing one to make it brighter or darker. But if I click on brush, it's actually different than this brush up here. It works the same, but it's letting me brush on or brush off part of this graduated filter. So right now it's in plus mode. So what I'd have to do is, you know, if I was in plus mode, you can see it's just going to make everything darker because I'm adding the way to think of it is I'm adding to the graduated filter here. But if I hold down my option or alt key, it goes into minus or subtract mode. Okay. You could also just click on erase down here, which puts you into that same mode. And then this is where you can go take a, take a little trick from number one is our tip number one, which is turn on auto mask. Um, and then I can go over here and I can brush along that edge and I can remove it from the parts of the photo that I don't want it to be on, which is pretty cool. All right. Now, I'm going to share something else with you too. We're going to go back into this auto mask feature because one of the ways that I use auto mask, let's turn on our overlay right now. See, see what I meant about the splotchiness as we zoom into what we have over here, you'll see it does, it does get splotchy sometimes and it misses little parts and it actually takes longer. So it's, it's more processing power. So one of the things that I'll do is once I get pretty close, all right, once I think I'm, I'm as close as I really need to be, all right. I'll go ahead and I'll turn auto mask off and then I'll paint the rest of it. All right. And this is really important when you're relighting your photos, this is going to happen. This brush tool is going to be one of your key tools for relighting and adding light to photos where it kind of fell flat. So, and a lot of times I'll use the overlay to, to paint in. You can say I've got the O, o key pressed here. That's off and that's on, but I'll use that to paint in too. So I can really see if I missed any spots, but, my, my main point with this whole one is outline the hard part first with your auto mask turned on. Okay. Go through and do the hard work. And I know there's a little bit left over there. We'll never, ever see it. Um, outline that hard part first and then go in, turn it off and then go get the big stuff, go get the rest of it. Because again, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it, you don't want, oh, you don't want auto mask turned on inside of these parts because it actually makes it harder to work with. So kind of goes back to that first tip of being able to turn it on and off a little bit faster as well. But don't forget when you're using that graduated filter, if we turn that overlay on, you'll see now it's just going in the sky. And then the same thing, let's go ahead and uh, let's delete the graduated filter and let's go to the radial filter. Same thing happens. If I do something with the radio filter, I get the brush up here. Again, a, an essential tool because sometimes you're going to use the radial. Sometimes you're going to use the graduated filter, but you don't want the exact shape that it is. And you really can't change it from linear or circle. But what you can do is use the brush to go in and subtract from parts of where that filter affected. Okay. Tip number three. Step number three is a really simple one, but man, do I use this a lot. And that is there are brush presets. These are the free presets that come inside of Lightroom. They're just, just basically uh, shortcuts to the settings inside of here. And you can see I've made a bunch of my own brush presets here, and I've actually got three of them that you can download uh, on the page where this video is hosted. So you can just head to mattk.com slash light. 
But what you can do is you can change your settings to let's maybe increase the exposure, the highlights, maybe a little bit of a um, little bit of temperature on there. And I've actually got one, in fact, that I call sunshine. And now I've got my brush. And then I can start to paint sunshine light. Okay. I use this all the time. It gives me a, just a quick way rather than having to go through and change these settings every time. I kind of have the settings that I know have worked for me in the past and it gives me a good starting place. I can always increase it or decrease it or even add some clarity to it or something if I wanted to. But there are presets there. So these are my presets. Of course, I do, do have a few of them for you to download. And uh, if you head down to the bottom, you will see it says save current settings as new preset. So you can make your settings whatever you want inside of here and then go down here and just choose save current settings as new preset. It's going to pop open a little dialog box. Just give it some type of a descriptive name. And that way, whenever you come inside here, your presets are going to be stored right there. And they're very different from develop presets. They're not going to show up over here on the left hand side, but they will show up. And here's, here's tip number 3.5 is they'll show up under the radial and the graduated filter too. So even though you're creating them under the brush, they actually share the settings so you can use those same presets across the graduated and the radial filter as well, okay? Folks, please uh, make sure you head over to mattk.com slash light. And uh, that is the, uh, the, the, the page for my No Light, No Problem course. Depending on when you're watching this, it's, uh, it might not be out yet, but it'll be out in just a couple of days. And uh, you can see the video there. You can download the video. You can also download the free presets that I mentioned inside of here, which are just a couple of my favorite uh, sunshine adding presets here inside of Lightroom. Okay. Thanks for watching so much. I hope you enjoyed and I'll talk to you again real soon.